Commutify presents Between the Lines with Andy Keaton. Each week, we explore the challenging issues transportation demand management professionals face on their journey to transition commuters from driving alone to more sustainable, shared and active commuting habits. Be sure to subscribe to hear next week's episode and check out our exclusive commuter playlists on Spotify. This is Between the Lines with Andy Keaton. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Between the Lines. We are joined today by our first repeat guest. You might recognize her from our telework episode way back in season one. We're joined today by Ali Vileka. Ali is a TDM project manager at AECOM. She's been working in TDM for 10 years, supporting multiple projects across the US. And most importantly for today, she is the chair of the Telework Council uh, for the Association for Commuter Transportation, or ACT. Um, and why that's so important is because this is part of our ACT Council Spotlight mini series, specifically this week on the Telework Council. Ali, thanks for joining us again. Thank you so much for having me, and I'm so glad to have my ACT Telework Council hat on today. Cool. So tell us, what is it? What is this ACT Telework Council, and who is it for? Yeah, so uh, the official name is the Telework and Alternative Work Arrangements Council, which is quite the mouthful, so we often just call it the Telework Council. But uh, it is a group of uh, like-minded professionals interested in not just telework, but flexible work programming that might include flex schedules, compressed work weeks, um, right? Anything that isn't kind of employer-led in creating uh, flexibility at the work site. And um, yeah, so our membership, we are uh, hovering around the 80 or 90 folks within um, our telework council. And the, our membership really ranges from um, consultants to employers, to TMA representatives, um, to folks interested in research, um, pe- folks interested on the real estate side of things. We have a, a very diverse membership, um, which I think is so great about the councils because really you can join any council anytime um, and it doesn't matter where you are, what you do, what you work on. Um, and so, yeah, our membership is very diverse. Um, and it's people who are interested in these programs who might be interested for their own organization, for organizations they're supporting, um, or just trying to kind of stay on top of what's happening and what's changing. So it's for everyone in the whole world who yes. is interested in teleworking, which maybe today is literally everyone. That's right. Um, or alternative work arrangements. Thank you for that clarification. Uh, let's get into a little bit like let's pull back the, you know, 10,000 foot view talking about telework and alternative work arrangements. Why is this whole group of ideas, this this telework alternative work arrangements so important to the future of TDM, transportation demand management, the future of commuting? Like it doesn't seem like it's transportation. It's like the lack of transportation. So why is this an important thing to be talking about? Well, I mean, I think, at the core, so many TDM programs and efforts are around reducing traffic congestion to have a positive impact on air quality. So I think that's why this becomes such an important strategy because it is that uh, you know zero emissions um, commute mode and um, can be such a powerful tool as it relates to traffic reduction and, and positive uh, air quality impacts. So I think that's where this piece comes into play with the TDM side of things. But I think the other thing too that makes it kind of unique is that, like I said at the beginning, it's very much usually an employer-led program, Um, right? So many TDM programs are obviously working with employers and organizations to create a commuting culture and to put things in place at the employer site that helps commuting, right? Like uh, pre-tax benefits um, and other things that the employer can do to support how you commute to work. But Um, You can also choose to carpool on your own without your employer supporting it. You can choose to bike to work without your employer supporting Mm it. Um, Most people can't just decide they're going to work from home unless there's really that employer support for it. Um, And so I think that's where um, kind of why this becomes so important and why it has been important prior to the pandemic and then will continue to be as kind of its own conversation because um, there's a lot of things we can do to impact behavior change and how people travel to work. But really, this is 
not possible without the support um, and the structure and the policy and guidance from the employer side. Yeah, that's a good point. I, that, that's a really good point. Like, yeah, you can't do this on your own. Um, and this is why the Act Council is valuable because you can help kind of provide that context and support for employers who are looking for this. Um, and just to do a little shameless plug here, if you want to learn more about teleworking, we did talk a lot more about this back in season one, episode nine. So you can go back in the archives and check it out. We had a great conversation. Uh, I haven't listened to it for a while, but I'm sure it was a great conversation. Uh, so you should check it out. Um, but let's get back into kind of the, the core here of this, of this episode, which is the council, the telework council. I'll call it that, even though it's got this longer name. What is the telework council doing? How are you planning to help transportation professionals, employers, et cetera, better incorporate telework practices kind of into TDM? You know, it's funny you say that about our uh, past episode that it was a great conversation. I did listen to it in preparation for today. <laughs> and me, as <laughs> what's interesting about it though, is that the conversation around teleworking in the workplace and kind of in TDM has very much evolved so much from March of 2020 to when we recorded that last episode, which I think was June of 2021 mm -hmm. to now. Um, and so I think what's been interesting about the work of our telework council is we're trying to provide relevant information to our members quickly. Um, and the reason I say that is because things are changing so fast that um, some of the things that we've created for our council may not be as helpful now, but man, when we put it together a year ago, it was like, this is awesome. This is exactly yeah. what people need. So, you know, what are we doing to help support TDM? We're trying to stay on top of the data, on top of the trends of what's happening, and then making sure that we're providing good information and resources to our members as they need them. I mean, the the councils are member-led, volunteer-based, right? So it's not like myself or Johan, who is our secretary, Johan Weber of Urban Trans, um, and Robin Mack of Mac Global, she is our vice chair. It's not like the three of us sit down and we're like, what, is, what do we personally want to accomplish <laughs> this year? It's like, what do our members want and need and how can we leverage the folks within the council or external, right, to help kind of deliver these things back to the members? Um, so I'll give you two quick examples of things that we've done for our members that I think are kind of a good illustration of how we're supporting what folks need. Um, we hosted a hoteling showcase uh, in 2021. And so, right, as people were starting to think about this hybrid return to office, um, a big piece of that is, uh, at the time, right, was what is the software? How does it work? If we want to be in the office a couple days a week, but not have a signed desk, there was also this idea of um, if you needed to kind of declare before you went into the office, right, like that I don't have any symptoms, or is there a way um, to track if desks have been sanitized in between users, all those things, right? And so these hoteling software companies that exist um, have all of those things in place, right? They were operating prior to the pandemic too. So there was a lot of good resources about the technology out there. Um, and so we hosted a showcase. We emailed a whole bunch of hoteling um, software companies and said, hey, would you be willing to come demo your product to our members? Um, and so we hosted that webinar, which is available for any ACT member on our website. Um, and then also kind of a... Uh, if you don't want to sit through the video, um, Urban Trans and Johan's team worked on kind of creating a document that took that webinar and put it into a PDF that's a bit more digestible if you didn't have time to sit and listen, right? So it was like, people were asking about hoteling, what can we do? Let's pull together these vendors and at least share some information back to our members. Um, a similar thing was happening too, which I also think of how quickly times have changed. Um, people were kind of all these organizations were coming out and defining what kind of hybrid company they were going to be right and i think companies are still doing that but it's a lot less so are we remote first are we office first are we office friendly right there was all these kind of terms that folks were using so we created a resource document for our members kind of t defining what those different um hybrid strategies may be where that you as an organization might figure out where you fall on that spectrum and then what kinds of programs and policies supporting hybrid work um, were companies implementing. So uh, 
I think it's commute with enterprise. I don't, I hopefully it's okay. I use their name, but I think at one point during the pandemic, they were doing like no meeting Fridays. Um, and maybe it wasn't every Friday, maybe it was once a month. And honestly, it could have just been a team of folks, but right. Like a strategy to say, Hey, we're spending a lot of time on zoom and the hybrid and the telework environment. And we're experiencing the fatigue of performing on camera. Um, why don't we encourage meetings to happen Monday through Thursday this week so that on Friday people can have that uninterrupted face time, uh, you know, to work on the things that they need to work on. So um, that's just two examples of how we have been kind of creating resources and things that our members could use that would be helpful. And it's all really based on conversations. You know, we meet quarterly um, and our members ask questions. Hey, is anybody doing this? Have you heard of this? And then as you start to build consensus around people having those same questions or being interested in those same things, then that's when Johan, Robin, and I kind of put our heads together, find members who are interested in helping us, and then kind of working with the ACT team to create these webinars or documents or things that will be helpful for members. Wow. <laughs> that's amazing. Uh, there's so much there. Um, I, I love the Friday no meetings idea. I, I like... We don't have a formal policy at Commutify for that, but yeah. at the beginning of the year, we kind of also were like, hey, we have too many meetings all the time and it's too hard to get work done. So like a few people at, at the company were just like, we're not doing meetings on Friday. And now like it kind of has become sort of a f informal, but like everyone does it kind of thing. Yeah. And it's great. Um, and it's good to hear from other companies that are doing something similar and like can provide that context. Um, so you've, you've shared, like, that was a lot. That was awesome. I, I feel like in that you've pretty much explained why someone should join, but let's get the pitch. Why should someone join the telework slash alternative work arrangements council? Or if they're listening and they're not even an ACT member, I'll throw this out at you. Why should they join ACT and then the telework council? I mean, I think... It is a fair assumption to say that the concept of telework is not going away, um, right? I also think it's funny that we are calling it hybrid now because when people worked from home one or two days a week prior to the pandemic, they were working in hybrid work schedule, but now it's hybrid. So hybrid yeah. and telework are not going away. Um, yep. And I think the pandemic has taught us that um, it's not always as simple as here's a laptop, go and work from home. Um, and so I think we are kind of constantly in this space of programs evolving and changing and the resources that employers need, the technology is constantly changing. I think because we are not in a status quo environment that there is so much change in this space um, that joining ACT to get a sense of how things are changing in transportation in general can be really helpful, but then getting access to people who really have the kind of ear to the ground on what's changing with technology and hybrid and telework um, can be just such an invaluable resource and really just connecting with, with the people too, um, right? I mean, I think it's great to have access to resources and things, um, but I think you kind of also start to develop a rapport with people that you would otherwise have never um, potentially interacted with before and, and then you can really start to build those additional re relationships with, with people in something that are interested in what you're doing. Um, I've always thought that that was one of the greatest values of ACT, um, right? Like we would have never connected Andy if it wasn't for yeah. ACT. Um, I've developed a really great rapport with Veronica Jarvis and I, it, it was all because she was coming to telework council meetings and like would send me messages asking me questions directly or following up with an email, right? And it's those little things that then start to kind of um, expand your your personal and your professional um, kind of people, right? Like your people. So I think that's one of the greatest things is there's the resources and the information and all of that. But I think really kind of building your professional network has been really invaluable too in a time where how things are changing is so quickly and so different, right? Like how uh, companies in Atlanta are responding is different than how companies in the state of Washington are responding and, and in Texas and in the Northeast, right? And so kind of being able to bring all that information together um, through the council is also very valuable. That was a long well answer. said. 
That was a good answer, though. It was well said. Um, it's true. I wouldn't have met you. Um, I love the Veronica Jarvis name drop. Um, if you don't, if you don't know who Veronica Jarvis is, there's there's reason in itself to join ACT and, sure. and the Telework Council. Um, okay, so this is this is the last question. This is a fun one. I we normally ask, you know, how this is going to save the planet, but I want to take a little different spin during this spotlight mini series on the act council so i want to just have you take out your crystal ball um tell me what is the future of telework alternative work where is this going to be in five years ten years i don't know sometime down the line andy i have no <laughs> idea but <laughs> What I, what I think I said before is still true. I think it doesn't go away. I, I think very much like the kind of ebb and flow of co-working spaces, um, right? I think those were like very popular many, many years ago and they've come back up, right? Same thing with like parting your hair in the middle. Can you wear <laughs> skinny jeans anymore? I kind of feel like the popularity of telework and hybrid work schedules will probably ebb and flow but I don't think it ever goes away. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of things that have impacted work for many years, right? For all the years that we've been working, I've done a lot of kind of researching and diving into what in history has impacted how we worked. And I think the pandemic and this height of remote work will have a lasting impact. I don't know how much that ends up being. I think we're still in that space of, we're gonna be hybrid for a few, one or two days a week, we're going to come in. Now we're starting to hear maybe people are coming in a little more often than they wanted. I don't know what's going to happen. I it's that's too much pressure for me to answer that question. But I do think it. I don't think it goes away. Um, and if anything, I don't know. Maybe maybe when we're all in our autonomous vehicles, we're all just working in cars with people we don't know. I don't know, I have no idea, but I don't think it goes away. I think it will continue to be important. It will be a workplace strategy um, and people will continue to want to have the flexibility of the workplace. Cause I do really think that that is hopefully the future that um, work is not something that we do. It kind of becomes incorporated in our life so that we have that balance, right? Of being able to be a parent, a coach, a friend, uh, someone interested in something outside of their work, but also their work and kind of being able to make it all happen. That's a good answer. That's a good answer. I did. I'll say I didn't have it uh, on my bingo card that you would bring up skinny jeans and middle parts uh, in relation to telework. Um, I did not expect that this episode, <laughs> but it makes a lot of sense. It's true. My sister just got bangs and I was like, wow, bangs. I haven't seen those in a long time. Yeah. Uh, wild. Um, telework, I guess, is like a new trend. Yeah, we'll see. But I, I agree that ebb and flow, it's always going to be around. Um, I love the idea. Yeah. Providing a just fostering a better work life balance. And um, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Good answer. Honestly, a good answer. And and you covered your bases. So we can't come back in five to 10 years and say, look, you were completely wrong. Um, That's right. You did a good job. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So <laughs> this has been great. This has been a really good episode. Um, and that's all we have. I mean, this is, we're keeping it short because we're putting these together with our, uh, with our other councils. Keep coming back. We've got another, I don't know, six more coming up um, with all the other councils in ACT. Uh, so you can get to know more about the Employer Council and the TMA Council and the Vanpool Council and all the others that are, they're all going to be on. Um, you can mark my words on that one. Uh, thanks for being on, Ali, And thanks for everyone for listening. Uh, like I always say, if you haven't yet, make sure you go um, to betweenthelines.io and subscribe to our email list so you can know what's coming up and get a notification on when a new episode's out. Uh, and a little tip the uh, videos are now up on Spotify. So if you're looking to watch me and Ali talk and uh, I don't know, 
I don't really know what there is to look at. I got a mat behind me. But if you're looking to watch us talk, you can do that on Spotify, on your phone. I did it the other day. I thought it was the coolest thing. It's the future, um, along with telework and uh, middle parts or skinny jeans. Well, not skinny jeans anymore. Um, but definitely check it out or check us out on YouTube as well. Thanks, everyone, for listening. And Ali, thanks again for being on. Thank you so much. And shout out to Johan and Robin. It's been a pleasure serving on the Telework Council with both of them. Awesome. All right. We'll see everyone next time. Thanks for joining us on this week's episode of Between the Lines with Andy Keaton. Be sure to subscribe to hear next week's episode and check out our exclusive commuter playlists on Spotify.